you remember the time when Meg, after years of suffering constant abuse from her family, finally snapped and told them all off about it? Well, if you don't, this was season 10 Seahorse Seashell Party, and it's here where we finally saw Meg rip into Lois about being a terrible mother. Somehow you have the nerve, the arrogance to consistently and ruthlessly point out my shortcomings. And while it certainly wasn't a great episode, it was at least very cathartic to see Meg finally stand up for herself and see Lois apologise for being the world's crappiest mum. You're right, I'm a terrible mother. I'm so sorry. Flash forward 10 years later and into the most recent episode, and their relationship couldn't be more different. Season 22 Snapple Decision sees Lois be a kind and loving mother to Meg, who even saves her from some kidnappers. And to see this shift is truly and honestly insane, showing just how far these characters and their relationships have truly grown. So let's get into the episode and see what worked and what didn't. And by the way, I'm working on a follow up to my previous video, Cartoons Worst Dad, but this time I'm gonna be looking at the many, many terrible animated mums. So let me know some truly awful cartoon mothers down in the comments below. And yes, Lois will be very, very high on the list. Anyway, the episode opens with Peter randomly declaring that he's going to compete in the St. Philip's Greasy Pole Contest, which is actually a legit event held all over the world, including Boston. Now, Peter was supposed to help Lois with her errand, so he gets Meg to fill for him instead. And then we cut to a pretty funny scene of Meg completing the online course that Peter made for her. Congratulations on being picked to fill in for me while I have a horse around day. Therefore, Meg then accompanies her mum to do some very boring mum things, like buying hand sanitizer and some Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs so I can skip brushing my teeth. Dog, you still got a brush. Lois then buys them two bottles of Snapple as a surprise, and when she opens the cap, it says that she won $10,000. At first, Lois wants to spend it on something like a water purification system, but Meg says that that idea is absolutely boring, and if Peter had the money, he would spend it on something stupid and very, very fun. So not wanting to seem like a boring old mom, Lois says that she'll use the money for a mother-daughter holiday instead. Like going on a top secret mother-daughter trip. Really? And while she and Meg go away on holiday, Lois hires a babysitter for Peter in a scene that made me burst out laughing. And we're allowed to watch Beetlejuice. The note specifically says no Beetlejuice. When the two arrive at their tropical destination, they start living it up and spending all of their Snapple money. We'll just buy new bathing suits at the lobby store. <gasps> this catches the attention of two men who hit on the pair and invite them out to dinner. And the biggest love I had in this episode was when the girls tipped down their sunglasses to check out the men and their butts. Lois's version was very, very blurry. Uh, I forgot these are prescription, but those are two smoking hot blobs. And as someone who has also recently got some glasses, this hit a bit too close to home. Anyway, later on, the two go shopping in a market where they are abducted by two masked men. And while they're driving away, Lois actually pleads with them to spare her daughter. If you let my daughter go, you can do whatever you want to me. Now, this is such a drastic change for Lois, who, let's not forget, used to wash Meg's clothes with Stewie's dirty diapers. Honey, give me any laundry you have. I'm doing a diapers and Meg load. This was also the very same woman who left a bottle of pills to Meg when she was fed up with her crying. But yeah, continuing on with this story, it turns out that the kidnappers were the guys from earlier, as they believed Lois and Meg were millionaires. And to escape, Lois gets a hold of her handbag and uses the many items she purchased earlier, like the lotion, to remove their handcuffs. Then she uses the hand sanitizer to spray into the kidnappers' eyes and the Tic Tacs to trip them up. This is before placing a brick into a handbag and knocking them the F out. Never mess with a mom. And when they arrive home, Lois admits that she's fine with being the boring mom because with Peter being in the house, someone has to be the responsible adult. And then they share a really super cute moment as they hug. I honestly love this. It reminded me a lot of the earlier seasons with Meg and Lois, like in season three's A Fish Out of Water when they went on a mother-daughter trip away for spring break. And it seems that pretty much since the episode, the two have barely interacted. And when they did, it was just for Lois to demean her daughter, kiss her boyfriend, or fight over the attentions of another man. But this recent episode was so refreshing because they acted like a real mother and daughter. 
I also liked how Lois wanted to be seen as cool to Meg and so treated them to a secret holiday just the two of them. And seeing Lois actually be protective of Meg was pretty shocking, but in the best way. There wasn't also any shying away from making this a mum specific fight scene. Like in a previous episode, they had her fighting a shark, so they could have very easily have used this as a scapegoat to really show Lois just beating someone up for the hell of it. But I thought it was really clever the way in which they used these mundane objects to help aid her fight. But the thing I liked best was the lack of Meg bashing here. Like there wasn't a single moment of someone calling her ugly or weird. She was just a normal teenage girl for once, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with them doing the occasional joke at Meg's expense, but the writers were really overdoing it. This was to the point where her one role was to be the punching bag, and it was her only role. And while I like it when the writers have made Meg look kooky and a murderous psycho in a wedding dress and some other strange things, I also like when she's allowed to be a normal teenage girl too, like in this episode. It's honestly so cool to see Lois and Meg scaled back and be treated like actual people. And yeah, I freaking love when Lois goes insane, but it's also nice seeing them a bit more grounded. This is only the seventh episode of the season and it's already Meg's third prominent appearance, with Meg giving birth in the first episode and her and Chris doing a cake sitting fans only page in the last one. And it's honestly so great that they are utilizing her more and more in the show. And judging by next week's episode description, we can assume that Meg will feature heavily again. Previously, she was really just a mute background character who may be thrown a line or two, so it's actually nice to see her break out a bit. But this wasn't purely a Meg and Lois episode, as the side plot focused on Brian and Stewie who believe their friendship is falling apart. So unlike Meg and Lois' relationship, which appears to be growing, this side plot deals with their stunted relationship. This opens with them at a diner and they realize they forgot their phones, causing them to make very awkward conversation. And for anyone who has spent a little too much time with one person to the point where they don't actually have anything more to say, then this was very, very relatable. Because of this, as well as the fact that Brian forgot their dinner plan, Stewie believes that they are drifting away. So he asks Brian to join him for a couple's counseling session to mend their friendship. But when they attend their session, the two keep treating it like a competition. Yes, Brian won, Stewie zero. Actually, Brian, this isn't a contest. Yes, one to one. The two are given the task to write a song for each other, but Brian, he thinks the whole thing is stupid and doesn't even bother. And after only a couple of sessions, even the therapist is sick of them and tells them to break up. But it is my opinion that you should end this friendship. Now, personally for me, I think more jokes could have been made out of these therapy sessions, but Truly, it felt as if it was over before it even started. But anyway, no longer friends, the two attend a friend's wedding separately. And one joke that did make me laugh was Stewie and Brian badmouthing each other to the other guests, despite the fact that they had absolutely no idea who they were talking about. It smells like butt. Let me guess, Brian was just here? Who's Brian? The plot finally concludes with them realizing that they do actually miss each other, with Brian singing Stewie a very quick and quite sweet song and they do become best buds again, with the episode ending with them back at the restaurant and comfortably communicating through text message. There were a good few laughs here, but I did feel that the writers had already done this idea a few times before, with Stewie concerned that they are drifting apart. The last time he felt this way, Stewie impregnated himself with Brian's DNA and gave birth to their gross weird hybrid puppy babies. At least this time he suggested counselling, so I guess that's growth. I think. But you know what, out of all of the episodes so far in this season, this was the best episode with them together. Their episodes so far together in season 22 and their adventures have been a bit boring. So at least this one was a bit more of an improvement. And then we did get a Cleveland joke show at the end of the episode, which did make me chuckle. I'm Cleveland Brown, and I know my show was better than this. And I don't know about you, but I don't remember the last time they mentioned it. So I enjoyed that. So overall, I did like the character development in this episode, but it was a little lighter on laughs than, say, the last couple. But even so, it was still quite a good, decent episode. So for that reason, I'm giving it four out of five stars. 
But what do you guys think? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Also, thank you so much for such a positive reaction to my book announcement, Collecting the Simpsons. It's out very soon on the 5th of December in the US, so make sure you grab your copy. The link is down below in the description.